Hello everyone. A while ago, I set up a BTC Pay server for Kia Sigma Delta so that we could accept cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. For the benefit of those who are considering doing the same, I just want to share my experience setting it up. So in brief, if you only want to support Bitcoin and not the Lightning Network or any of the alternative cryptocurrencies, I would say BTC Pay server is pretty easy to set up. You just follow the instructions on their website and it works. The trouble starts when you start wanting to support other cryptocurrencies like I support uh, Litecoin and Monero or the Lightning Network and that one's for a different reason. Now the altcoins, the, the reason is, as the name suggests, BTC Pay, the core team are entirely focused on Bitcoin. They've been gracious enough to add plugins so that you can support other coins, but their focus is Bitcoin. And so the development of, of the Bitcoin support is the highest quality. The, the Litecoins, Dogecoins, Monero and what else, they're handled by third parties and the quality varies. And the people who did the port may have done it just for themselves and they got it as far as they needed it. And they may not still be around to continue maintaining it. All right, so in my case, um, I wanted to support Litecoin and Monero, and I decided to use hardware, a hardware, a physical hardware server, a Raspberry Pi 4, which is an ARM machine. So here's, here's a tip. First, you might not want to, it might be better, you might be better off renting a server in the cloud somewhere, uh, rather than buying physical hardware, because if you buy physical hardware, there's a, there's a high upfront cost, you've got to buy the hardware, you need a big hard drive, I'd say at least a terabyte these days. Um, it's not just the physical machine, you probably also want a UPS so that it remains running even if the power goes off. Right. But anyway, if, if you are going to use a physical server, if you have an old lap, X64 laptop or desktop around, I'd recommend using that. Um, the reason is, when I went to install Litecoin and Monero on my Raspberry Pi 4, the Docker containers for the ARM processor inside were not done. Right? So everything works on, on x64, but they weren't done. And I had to write the Docker files myself. Now I have shared the Docker files back. One of them was accepted, but the other one, um, yeah, they had trouble. They, they couldn't build the Docker file that I sent for some reason. I couldn't figure it out. And when I asked for help, uh, none, none came. So yeah, if you're using ARM hardware like the Raspberry Pi, you may end up having to write your own Docker files or hiring somebody to do that. Uh, that's something to be aware of. Um, your mileage may vary on that. <clears throat> and then after you've installed it, the, the altcoin plugins, again, are of varying quality. So the Litecoin one was the best integrated of the ones that I tried. It looks pretty much exactly like Bitcoin, which is not surprising considering that Litecoin is sort of built on the same code, originally built on the same code. The Monero plugin was the clunkiest. It, it, it's really not integrated very cleanly. The setup is, is messy, but you know what? It works, it works. Just be aware that supporting the other ones can be a bit of a pain. Now the Bitcoin Lightning Network is a different matter. Um, and even if you only support Bitcoin, you may want the Lightning Network because Bitcoin is kind of a victim of its own success. The Bitcoin fees are getting quite high, which means small payments, uh, the, the fees are, are too big to really make small, pay, small payments sorry, feasible. And that's why the Lightning Network was created, because it allows micropayments. It brings the, the, the speed at which the transaction happens up and the transaction fees down, which sounds great, right? And the Lightning Network is now at a stage where for buyers, it's easy. You just install a wallet that supports Lightning Network. You load in money into your Lightning Network wallet, a bit like a prepaid card, and away you go. You can start buying things. On the seller side, on the merchant side though, that's where things get complicated. You see, you need something they call inbound capacity. And to understand that one, you need to understand how the Lightning Network works. The Lightning Network has a, a 
large network of channels and each channel has a fixed amount of money in it that can move from one end to the other. And when you open a channel to somebody else, you put your money in and all the money is at your end. So you can use it to pay, but you can't use it to receive. What you need is you need other people to open channels to you that have money in it. And then the buyer will connect to somebody else. And so long as there is a path where money can flow in your direction, they can pay. <clears throat> so here, th this is where things get complicated. So there are people who put money into the Lightning Network to make what's called liquidity, so the money can flow around. And of course, they want, they want to earn money off the transaction fees because otherwise they would invest that money in the stock market or something else. So when you go to set up the Lightning Network, first you have to decide between one of three Lightning Network uh, programs. I wish they would just focus on one and make sure it worked really well, right? Because it's not obvious. They don't tell you, they don't, there are no recommendations. I ended up using the C Lightning, uh, Lightning Network software um, just because I had to pick one. But anyway, once you go past that and also the big warnings that they have saying like the Lightning Network is still experimental and you may lose money, blah, blah, blah. Then you hit the how do I get inbound capacity so that people can pay me problem. And I want you to, to listen to what I'm saying, imagining that you're a guy who's completely broke, but let's say you, you have a big orange tree and you've got lots of oranges that you can go to, to sell at the farmer's market, but the farmer's market is using the Lightning Network, right? So you turn up there and it's like, yeah, you need inbound capacity for people to pay you. It's like, okay, how do I get there? Well, you can go buy lemons from, from Joe over there. And then the channel that you open, there'll be some money at the other, the other end. So then people can come and buy your, your oranges. So, well, well, I'm broke. I don't have that. It's like, okay, well, if, if you, other people will then say, if you open a channel to me, I'll open channel back and then, then there'll be money on my channel that open to you at my end and that money can flow that way. But, but, you know, only if you put 2000 bucks up, right? You know, it has to be worth it for me. So again, um, I'm broke. How do I do that? It's like, well, you know, the, there's a guy over there. He will rent you some inbound capacity, right? You, you pay him a fee and then for, for 30 days, he promises he won't, close the channel on you and, and take back his money. Right? Well, you know, I'm, I'm broke. I, I have something to sell. I don't have any money to pay to, for the privilege of selling. I hope, hope you get the picture. There's, if you know somebody who has a Lightning Network node who is willing to open a channel to you to give you some inbound capacity and he's well connected, then you're way to go. Otherwise, it seems that you, you need to put up money in order to be able to receive money. And the whole thing feels a little bit money grabby. Uh, now, now, as I said, um, to be fair to the people doing this, they, they are putting money that they could be investing elsewhere and earning money off into the Lightning Network so that it works. Uh, you can't blame them for wanting to have a return on their investment. But the whole thing does set up this sort of barrier. Now, for, for most businesses, that's not a problem. You just you know, buy inbound capacity off somebody else and away you go. But it just, yeah, it's complicated because again, who do you open a channel to? N nobody really gives you much guidance on that. So my recommendation would be just start with Bitcoin. Um, when you, when you're ready, when you know that you're going to have more people spending money, the Lightning Network, you're just going to have to work through it. I, this is something that I really hope that the Lightning Network developers will fix in due course so that people can, just like Bitcoin, create a new wallet and start accepting payments instead of having this whole game of, well, which, which client should you use? Which, which, how do I get inbound capacity? Which other node should I connect to? Let, let's just have it so that you can set it up and it works. Anyway, that, that's it for today. I hope this has been helpful for those who want to set up a BTC Pay server in order to accept crypto payments. I will see you next time.